Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Alright, let's try zombies. Not sure yet how this deck is gonna look like. Definitely possible we don't have enough zombies to make this work. Zombies, so definitely want to four crit breakers. Diagraph Ghoul's a good one drop. Huh, zombie knights. The more you know. Yeah, this card could be good. Don't know if we need Stitcher Supplier. Depends how many graveyard synergies we have. Ooh, this is also a zombie knight. All right, all right. Well, we're starting to get somewhere. Death Baron, another Anthem effect. Graveyard Marshal, decent two drop. I guess this is fine too. Plays well with uh, Crypt Breaker. Plays well with our Anthem effects. Don't think this is a Regisaur deck, but maybe if we want to slant the deck a little bit more aggressively. And then Liliana Untouched by Death. Might not want four, but like a three off could be fine. And then keep the curve relatively low. Uh, Gutter Bones is a skeleton, so it does get pumped by Death Baron, but it's not a zombie, so it doesn't synergize with Liliana or with Crypt Breaker. So I don't know if I want Gutter Bones. So right now we're at 59, and I could make room for some additional removal. I'm a bit heavy on 3 drops, especially considering that sometimes we want to adventure the Falmar Knight first. So I could see shaving a couple Midnight Reapers, for example. Or Death Parents make room for a bit more removal. Like this figure seems good, since I expect a lot of turn one Lanor Elves. Yeah, I don't need the full four Marshals to could be enough. It seems like having cheap, efficient removal is important in this format, so I like this figure. Could also play Icon of Ancestry. But we have Crypt Breaker as our card draw engine. Diagraph Ghoul is a bit of a nombo with uh, Crypt Breaker because it enters tapped. But we can play this turn one and then turn two. Potentially play Crypt Breaker and another one drop. Like even if it has summoning sickness, we can still activate this for the second ability. Could see shaving a Death Baron. Could see shaving Lazotep Reaver because it does have a bit of diminishing returns in the sense that amassing onto an existing zombie army is not necessarily what we want. Yeah, not sure what the last cut should be. Maybe just shave a Death Baron. Try something like this. Any fancy lands we can play. Can definitely afford one or two colorless lands in this build since we don't have any triple black cards we need to cast. But uh, I guess Castle Lockthwain's pretty good. So I can play four of those. Not a fan of Stronghold if we're going to play Castle. So I think I'm going to start like this, just four castles, 20 swamps. And uh, see how this plays out. Alright, so we're on the play. There's our Crypt Breaker. A bit heavy on the threes, sadly, but I can just activate Crypt Breaker on two, I guess. Storm Tamer. Eh, I'm gonna say go. If they put a Curious Obsession on their thing, I can cast down it, otherwise I'm just gonna make a zombie. It is tempting to just pass. That way I don't play into a counter spell. They could also have a Merfolk Trickster here. And then if they do have a Curious Obsession, I can maybe stop that from connecting. Sure. I guess I could ditch the Reaper, since my creatures aren't dying in this matchup. 
All right, that's pretty good. And attacking would only get in two damage, so it's probably not even worth it. So let's tap this, this, and this. Not a crib breaker is fine. So I'm just gonna pass a turn here, I think. With cast down at already. And then I'll see whether or not I wanna make a zombie, maybe discarding the other crib breaker. Let's see if they have the dive down or spell pierce. Yes, they do. But now I get to jam Death Baron and start attacking. So I can, I guess, play this and then still tap one additional zombie to draw a card. That's pretty good. They seem in trouble. They could have like Murfolk Trickster targeting Death Baron to remove the ability and then I lose the plus one plus one and death touch. So we got to see the power of Death Baron in that match. Alright, well, we completed the event, but we can keep playing in it. Alright, this hand is a lot less exciting. I think I'll try a mulligan here. And Crypt Breaker is amazing against counterspell heavy decks because you can just start making zombies with the ability, eventually start drawing cards, and there's not much they can do about it. They could have like a seal away to exile the Crypt Breaker here. Didn't think Cast Down is going to be very good in this matchup. So yeah, I'm not going to run Reaper into a counter spell, just pass the turn. I guess uh, sweepers are going to be an issue here at 5 mana. So I can start drawing some cards with my Crypt Breaker. I could jam Midnight Reaper and then if they, let's say, have a Chemister's Insight and they want to counter this, they don't get to cast their Chemister's Insight. And then if they do have a Sweeper, I get to draw some cards at least. Although it doesn't count tokens. So the Reaper is a bit of a nombo with the tokens from Crypt Breaker. I think what I'm going to do is just draw cards and then... Adventure the Falmar Knight end of turn. And then if they do tap out for a sweeper, I get to resolve Liliana, which should be decent. No Chemistry's Insights end of turn. So this is probably a time wipe. Ooh, Gadwick for two. Alright, fair enough. Alright, so I can play my Liliana, kill Gadwick. And I probably still want to draw instead of dealing 5. Alternatively, I can jam a bunch of cheap creatures, 
to draw even more cards with Crypt Breaker. I could resolve Midnight Reaper in case of a Sweeper. I guess it's pretty good too. Maybe I should have main phased, um, tapped all three in case I hit a land drop. Seal away. Yep. That's fine. Murder Strider cleans up the ferry. Alright, so I guess we'll start with the plus one. One person's trash is another woman's army. I'll just kill the ferry. Do this first in case a spell pierce. Play an extra Crypt Breaker and keep drawing cards. Um, I guess since I'm not using the tap ability for the extra zombie, I might as well play the one that comes into play tapped. Gotta watch out for settled or wreckage potentially. Could have another seal away. Probably not gonna use a minus three here. So plus. Drawing Castle would actually be pretty good in this matchup. So I guess I can send all that to Ferry. That way if they do have Seal Way it still dies. And then I'll play the Midnight Reaper I think. And then if they do wipe the board, I can use Liliana's minus three to um, get back Rib Breaker. All the castles. Well, we're not really under any pressure to attack into a silver wreckage. I'm happy just drawing more cards with my zombies. Just gonna draw with the Falmar Knights and double activate Crypt Breaker. Ascanta is gonna flip next turn.
All right, so now I can consider making some attacks. Although fully expect a uh, seller wreckage, so I can just send my tokens. What does Liliana do? I think just keep plussing for now. Could potentially go for a minus, get a couple Crypt Breakers or Midnight Reapers back. Doesn't seem necessary. I value moral this is also slowly killing them. Crib Breaker definitely helps in these uh, types of matchups. Unlimited card draw, basically. And we can discard our bad removal spells and turn them into zombies. So, Skanta flips. Yep. Even if my opponent did have a sweeper there, I would get to draw a card for each non-token creature for each Midnight Reaper and then Liliana can minus and get them all back. Alright, still don't know what we're up against. Oko can uh, murder Strider that. So we're up against Simic Food. So against Wicked Wolf, playing Midnight Reaper is not amazing. Could just play the Murder Strider, I guess. But if they do Wolf my Reaper, I at least get to draw a card and force them to sack a food. So it's not the worst. but I don't want them to cast any scary 5-drop. Hmm, this hand's a bit low power, but I do have good interaction. And I can just draw with the Falmar Knights on three. So it's not the worst. Definitely happier playing this as a one drop as opposed to maybe in standard, unless you've got an innkeeper. Because we've got some cards that reward us for having zombies in play.
We'll hold on to the knight for now. Alright, points on elves. This is potentially a tough matchup for us. I guess it's still pretty even. We've got some decent removal. Oof, cast down doesn't hit Marwyn though, sadly. I did consider potentially using cast down on the elf in case it did have like a Marwyn. But uh, they might have also had a Steel Leaf champion. So. Did I consider Priest or Ayara in this deck? We already have enough 3-drops, uh, so there's no real room for Ayara. And I want to keep my zombies instead of sacrificing them. Crib Breaker wants us to just keep adding zombies to the board instead of sacrificing them to Priest. Probably won't be able to kill Marwyn with my Liliana. I would need to draw 1-drop. Never mind. So yeah, this Marwyn's definitely an issue. Cast sounds a little awkward. But I can kill Steel Leaf Champion. Well, we actually got pretty close. I'm one mana short of uh, killing Marwyn here. I'm just gonna say go. Probably end up uh, killing the Steel Leaf. Suppose my opponent could have Galta in their deck, and I'm supposed to just kill it right away, but seems unlikely. Well, at least they don't have a Beast Whisper. So I will also need to kill this Clan Caller before they can get more, but Liliana can clean that up too. No, that's a problem too. Probably still need to kill the Steel Leaf though. So if I draw lands, I can kill the two Lords and the Steel Leaf. Crib Baker isn't bad. What's a bigger problem? I guess Clan Caller is a bigger issue. So I should kill that. Well, Falmar Knight is doing a good job on defense. Interesting attack. I guess my opponent could have the Wild Speaker plus uh, three to all non humans. They can only activate this once, so that would be seven. Can they activate this and Wild Speaker me? So yeah, they can still only activate this once, but they could activate this and Wild Speaker me. So I probably gotta block the Thorn Lieutenants. How about I do this? Still forces the Wild Speaker usage. And I'm not dead if they have it. Also want to keep my life total high so I can still draw cards with Crib Breaker and Midnight Reaper. All right, that worked out. I could have also like traded Reaper for the Imperious Perfect and then put a a random one one in front of the two twos, which then would have died once the Lord dies. But if they did have some sort of pump spell, that would have gone poorly. 
All right, so don't hit my spots. Can just plus. Don't get squeamish on me. Hang on to cast down in case of another lord, and then start drawing with Grip Breaker. Alright, so how many zombies can I make here? Quite a few. So let's see, two, four, five, six. Yeah, we can even kill this Marwin. can even contemplate an attack. Gotta be careful that I don't die if they trade off a bunch because of these Midnight Reaper triggers. I guess now I just want to find a Death Baron. Alright, sweet. So, zombies beat elves. Yeah, the zombie deck seems pretty sweet. It's got a nice balance of interaction, card draw, board presence. Liliana seemed very good in the games we've played with it. Any changes I want to make? Not really. Lazada Breaver also seemed nice with uh, Crib Breaker and Death Baron. Murder's Rider is excellent, also counting as a zombie. It's kind of a cherry on top here. We included most uh, playable zombies. Don't think we want Dreadmalkin. Supplier doesn't do much for me since I don't care about filling the graveyard all that much. It's nice with Marshall and Liliana, but it's not really worth a card. And yeah, that's about it. Rotting Regisaur doesn't really do what we want to be doing. It's kind of anti-synergy with um, the Crib Breaker. Because as you can see in a lot of games, we don't really care about attacking my opponent's life total. We just want to build up a board, draw some cards, and once... Once we take over the board, we can eventually close out the game, but we're not in a hurry. It's kind of the slow, plodding uh, zombie army, ever-growing, until it eventually overpowers the opponents. Pretty flavorful, in a way. So yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with the uh, current build. Not sure if there's better alternatives than Cast Down. Don't think so. That's a good point. Gruesome Menagerie could be pretty effective. Although only six two drops and Murder Strider sometimes doesn't end up in the graveyard. So yeah, Menagerie could be fine maybe in the sideboards against the more controlling decks. Don't necessarily need it in the main. Phyrexian Arena would also be a card I could consider for the sideboard. But uh, yeah, every non-zombie card we add to the deck makes Crib Breaker a little bit worse, makes Death Baron worse, makes Liliana worse. So we do want to make sure we have enough uh, actual zombies in the deck too. And with four castles, we don't want Stronghold, because this doesn't count as a swamp. And if we ever draw a castle and Stronghold, the Stronghold is going to be pretty useless, doesn't make black mana, 
and sometimes we want to cast multiple black one drops in the same turn or graveyard marshal so i think stronghold is actively bad in this deck but uh, for now i want to thank everyone for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.